Today, I'm going to test the Combro Comgo Z1 laser engraver. The machine comes with a dual beam laser module that claims to have an optical output of 10 watts. I am going to put it to the test to see how it performs at laser engraving and laser cutting plywood, hardwood, and acrylic, and even stainless steel. I am also going to test how it engraves anodized aluminium, measure its laser spot size and compare all the results to other machines I have tested previously. If you decide to buy this machine, you can use my affiliate link in the video description below where I also put my discount coupons. I get a small commission which helps me make more videos like this to help you choose the best machine for your needs and get more discount coupons for you. The machine has a construction similar to other machines with an exception that it uses two stepper motors for the y-axis, instead of just one. The machine has a highly adjustable z-axis adjustment system which uses thumb screws for quick adjustment. This machine has a simple control panel and USB connection. The machine does not come with a focusing block. The 10 watt module has to be focused 7 mm above the surface, so I used a piece of 7 mm acrylic as a focusing block. But the 5 watt version has to be focused only 2 mm above the surface. The machine has limit switches, which is very nice. First let's make an alignment test to see if the machine can start engraving on the same exact position multiple times in a row. I start by engraving a word on a small piece of wood, then I manually move the laser head away and calibrate home position again. Then, I engrave the same thing two more times to see if the lines align. The alignment is perfect. This process can't be done with machines without limit switches and comes useful when making engravings in multiple operations. First, we are going to do the standard engraving test on poplar plywood. Since this machine has double the output power, I have used the modified test pattern I have used and explained in my previous videos with the Nijay Master 2S Plus, Xtool D1 and the Atomstack A10 Pro. The power scale test shows us how the engraving performance is affected at different speeds and power settings. The interval test is especially good for determining if the machine has a square or rectangular laser spot shape as it progressively increases the distance between each engraved line when scanning horizontally and vertically. The photo engraving test is there to see how much detail you can get when engraving a photo. The results are good. This machine has a lot of output power. Let's compare it to some other machines I have tested previously. Notice that only this machine, the Nijay Master 2S Plus, Xtool D1, and the Atomstack A10 Pro are 10 watt machines and the test pattern used here is modified for use with higher power. The rest of the machines have 5 watt modules. You can compare the results of all the machines I have tested on my website hobbylasercutters.com. Link in the video description below. Next, I engraved the test pattern on black anodized aluminium. This test showcases the engraving precision, laser dot size and shape, and overall laser output power. The main feature of this test is the interval test in vertical and horizontal direction to further evaluate the laser spot shape, as the engraving on anodized aluminum comes out very crisp and detailed, and therefore it is easy to clearly identify the laser spot shape. Compared to similar machines, the engravings look a bit less balanced in both directions, which means that the laser spot size is rectangular. Let's see the details with a microscope. There are some vibrations visible when engraving small text, but the result is still very good. It shows some distinct micro jagged edges, which are probably a result of having two stepper motors on Y axis.
The next test on the list is the focus distance test. I start by placing three 3mm acrylic sheets on the laser bed and place the wood board on top. Then, I focus the laser optimally and engrave the text and the first square with 0mm written in it. 0mm is the optimal focus. Then, I keep removing the 3mm sheets one by one, without readjusting the focus to see how the laser beam shape looks further away from the optimal focus. Compared to the Nije, the Atomstack and the X-Tool, the Combro Combo Z1 appears to have quite a large focus spot at a greater distance. This should affect the cutting ability of thicker materials which we will test next, but since this machine has a lot of power, it could still cut very well. And now let's see how Combro Combo Z1 performs at cutting 3mm, 6mm and 10mm poplar plywood boards. I run the cutting tests at 300, 600 and 900 mm per minute, both in horizontal and vertical cutting direction. I will not include clips of all the cutting tests in this video, but on my new website hobbylasercutters.com you will find detailed images and results of all the tests I did. This machine has no problems cutting materials up to 10 mm thick, which is quite surprising. Although, compared to Sculpt Fun S9, it leaves darker and more charred edges. This machine cuts very well. Here is a table of results. I also tested the performance at cutting pine, beech and oak hardwood. I also tested the performance at cutting 3mm and 10mm black acrylic at 600mm per minute. It took only 4 passes to cut 3mm thick acrylic. Then I tried to cut this almost 10mm thick piece of black acrylic. It took 36 passes for the 10mm acrylic board. This means that the machine can cut thick acrylic, but it is a bit unpractical for bigger cuts. During the cutting process, it heats up the plastic a lot, making it very soft. Lastly, I tried engraving the stainless steel that I blackened with a black spray paint. I used a very slow speed of 200 mm per minute and full power. The engraving is quite dark. This machine is a good engraver for stainless steel. The Sculpt Fun S9 is a clear winner when looking at the focus spot size. This is why the S9 is a such a good cutter, despite having only half of the output power. It is the only machine with 5 watt laser module that can engrave stainless steel. You can find a purchase link for this machine in the video description, where I will also list a discount coupon if you decide to buy it. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.